is Cristiano Ronaldo a number 9? Is Lionel Messi a number 10? Who is the best number 6 in the world? To get answers to these questions and to understand soccer positions by number, continue watching this video. So there's three main reasons why we use numbers for positions rather than the names of the positions themselves. And those three reasons are as follows. Number one, you get a defined function for each number, right? So a number six has a specific defined function on the field rather than that function being called a central defensive midfielder, for example. The other thing is, each coach has a specifically defined function for how he wants his number six to play. And that definition of what that number six has to do in that coach's system may be different from another coach's system, right? So that's something that is the most critical aspect in what I'm going to show you. The second is roles and responsibilities. So it's similar to the first point, but the roles and responsibilities of that player in that system will differ from the roles and responsibilities of another number in that system. The third is ease of communication. It's much easier to communicate to a player the expectation that he needs to go on the field and play in a specific numbered position when you're attacking and a different number for this position when you're defending. I think one of the best examples of that is Juan Sebastian Veron when he played for Manchester United. When he was attacking he was more central, he played like a number 8. But when he was defending he had to cover the left flank so he was more like a number 11. And there's, there's tons of examples of these that many coaches use throughout their respective systems. So these are the three main reasons why numbers are easier to communicate, have clearly defined functions and roles and responsibilities. So most of the numbers in a tactical system fit perfectly into a 4-2-3-1. Number one is your goalkeeper. And some of the best examples are Peter Schmeichel, Gianluigi Buffon, etc. And your number one's role is mainly to be a goalkeeper. There's no alternate role to a number one. Your number two is the right back or the right wing back. Their job is to be a, a part of the defense and to contribute to the attack when able. Brazil's Cafu, who mastered that position to become a world-class player. The next position we'll look at is the left back. And the left back or the left wing back is also called a number three. Some of the best number threes in the world have been Brazil's Roberto Carlos and more recently Barcelona's Jordi Alba. Now the number three and the number two can be used as part of a four-man defense but they can also be used in fairly advanced roles as well in a five-man defense, right? So that would mean that you would add another central defender possibly and the number three and the number two can push up further. The next positions are the central defensive positions and like you can see the number four and the number five. Now usually coaches refer to the number four position as the real central defensive position whereas the number five is more a sweeper role, right? So these days sweepers are not used that often but anytime you want to refer to your central defensive partnership you can call both of them number fours or you can call them the number four and the number five as well. Some good examples of central defenders are Virgil van Dijk of Liverpool and Cannavaro of Real Madrid. The next position that we're going to see is the central defensive midfield role, the number six. Now like I mentioned before, these numbers depend on each coach's tactical system, right? So a number six for coach A could be slightly different than a number six for coach B. Some good examples of players who've played in the number six position are Javier Mascarano of Argentina and Barcelona. 
and uh, more recently Fernandinho who's played in, in a dedicated number six position for Manchester City. The next position we'll look at is more a dedicated central midfield position that is attacking and defensive. We often refer to this position as the box-to-box -box midfielder, also known as the number eight. Some very, very famous number eights that have graced the game are Andres Iniesta, Pirlo and Paul Scholes. Um, they have been truly a joy to watch from a box-to-box -box perspective. They have truly bossed the game. You want your number eights to have everything, right? You, you, you need them to have a good endurance. You need them to have excellent vision for passing. You also need them to step up and become the playmaker from time to time. But if you have a dedicated number eight that is world class in your team, that means that that person is responsible for putting all of the passes around the team together. And most probably your number eight will be the player that's on the ball the most. The next positions we're gonna look at is the, 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 the two wide players. Now the number seven is a wide player on the right hand side and the number 11 on the left hand side. Now both of these players have similar roles and they're just on different flanks uh, in, this, in this case. Good examples of number seven are David Beckham who was naturally right footed, but recently a lot of left footed players are put onto the right flank by coaches. And a good example of these are Riyad Mahrez and uh, Mohamed Salah of Liverpool. So I think um, your, your number 7 and number 11 roles often are interchangeable as well. Good examples of number 11 players are Ryan Giggs of Manchester United, left footed, played on the left flank quite a bit but moved in when required as well and Gareth Bale who's now at Real Madrid and he's naturally left footed as well. The next position that we're going to look at is the attacking midfield position also known as sometimes a supporting striker. The number 10 position is usually the playmaker oftentimes and has most of the ball throughout the game. So if you were to see which are your central players that you want on the ball majority of the time in this sort of system, it would be your number 10, 8 and 6. Good examples of a number 10 role are Wayne Rooney and Lionel Messi. They usually play just behind the striker and oftentimes can actually make runs and play the role of the number nine as well. The number 10 role in modern soccer has become a very versatile role. Now you, you may have noticed I mentioned Lionel Messi as well. Messi is not just a number 10. He's a world-class player that can play in a variety of positions. And some may argue that, yeah, you can't put Messi in the number 10 role. But the reason players like Rooney, Messi, Ronaldo get into that number 10 slot is because your number 10 slot usually belongs to some of the best of the best who can do everything from scoring goals to assisting to crossing etc etc. They can even pitch in uh, in midfield and you can see that Wayne Rooney and Lionel Messi and even Ronaldo often track back, get into midfield, take the ball, run the team. Uh, spread the play etc. So I think that distribution and vision is very very important for a number 10. And finally we get into the number 9 role. Now the number 9 role is your striker. It's also known as the center forward from time to time. Uh, and your number 9 role also becomes versatile sometimes. So some of the dedicated roles that have been number 9 based are Ruud van Nistelrooy and Brazil's Ronaldo. They used to have a dedicated role of staying in that position and scoring goals. But you also have different false nine positions as well. There are also roles that Cristiano Ronaldo has played that have been around here, but he had free reign to move into other positions. So sometimes the number nine doesn't dedicatedly have to be a number nine. So I hope you like this video where I've explained why we use the numerical system in soccer for specific positions. Basically, there's three main reasons. There's a defined function usually, there's roles and responsibilities for each position that coaches designate, and it's much easier to communicate the numbers of the positions to players. So now that you know the numbers of all of the positions, 
What do you think? Is Ronaldo truly a number 9? Is Messi truly a number 10? Leave your comments below and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.